All right, so we are now on to Vim Part 3. If you haven't seen Part 2, Horizontal Movements, that's okay. If you haven't seen the first one, you should probably check that one out. It really kind of lays out the groundwork for this one here. And of course, if this makes you very excited, you better go down there and press that little like button right there. Just press it, give it a little press. And since this is a multi-part series and there's more to come, hit the subscribe button if you want to stay notified. Notified. But let's just talk about vertical movements today. All right, so if you recall from the very first episode we did in this series, I talked about the anatomy of an ocean. It went, uh, ocean? The anatomy of a motion. It went count and then the motion itself. A motion, of course, is anything that moves the cursor. So J and K are motions, which means I can do something like 5J, and it will move it down five lines. Now, this is the reason why you have something like relative line numbers right here, is that way it allows you to jump exactly where you want to jump. So take this one right here, this eight down bottom five you want right here. I can just go 8J. And of course, practicing that makes a huge difference. Now, in the first episode, I did talk about Vim Be Good. You should definitely get into this by now. You should definitely be practicing these, jumping in here, playing through a couple games, because just going through that a few times is going to make you just have it like so it's more second nature. So you're not over here just like thinking too much about the movements themselves. Instead, you're actually just doing it instinctually, which I think helps a lot. All right, but that was from the first one. You already knew that relative line numbers are really great but one of the problems is what happened if you need code that's beyond what you can see right here what happened if we needed to go all the way down here to the 13 well that would be problematic right because you couldn't relatively jump down there and the last thing you'd want to do is be doing something like uh 30j oh that's not enough okay 12j right like you don't want to be jumping you don't want to be guessing so the second vertical movement you can do which i used to do and i stopped doing was move by paragraph a paragraph is simply any contiguous non-white space. So these sets of 13s here is a paragraph. So if I go opening brace, it's going to go up by paragraph. You'll notice that I appear on the top of every one of these. If I go closing squirrely brace, you'll notice I'm on the bottom of every paragraph. Now, I used to use this kind of movement all the time, but one thing I found is that it moves based on how the code is spaced out. So if you happen to work with somebody that says uh, programs like this, where they have a function, they have if, and they have things inside of here, and then it keeps on going, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, 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 and then you try to jump up, you'll jump the entire function. It becomes very, very complicated because you only jump based on how someone else formats their code. So I don't really recommend using this type of movement. The type of movement that I actually most prefer, and at first I really hated it. My old Vim videos had me not recommending it. Actually using this was my recommendation, but now I've changed, which is to start using Control D to jump a half page down and Control U to jump a half page up. Now I want you to notice something when I do that. Look at my cursors. I'm way down here. It's on like the bottom third of my screen. When I press Control D, where does it end up? It's in the middle of my screen. When I press Control U, it's in the middle of my screen, always. Now, how did I do that? Of course, since I use Lua, I'm using the Lua functions right here, but effectively I remap Control D. If you're not familiar, of course, with this, please go check out the VimRC video, but I remap it with a non-recursive remap to take Control D to become Control D ZZ. ZZ centers your view. So that means whenever I hit Control D, it also centers my view. I find it to really make moving with Control D and Control U much easier because I'm just looking in one spot and I'm letting the code kind of hit my eyes instead of becoming disoriented where my cursor went. I highly recommend this. A couple more kind of vertical movements. You can do G to go all the way down to the bottom, that's capital G, or GG to go all the way up to the top. Now, here's the thing is that I always forget which way is which, so I'm always like, I uh, okay, there we go. Right, it takes a couple tries. I rarely use this motion because it's not necessarily... Uh, something you need to do very often. I guess if I'm adjusting some imports, I will double G up to the top and go, okay, here, let me adjust some imports. But that's a rarity, and often my LSP is the thing that's actually doing the imports. And of course, you can also just simply type in the uh, you know colon and go to an exact line number. So if, say, if line 100 was existing in this file, I could jump all the way to line 100. Very useful if you have some sort of error and you know what line it's on. And of course, if you exceed the amount of lines, it just goes to the last line. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, holy cow, okay, that's a lot to take in, but don't worry, we have more things for you to take in. Blazingly fast. The last couple things I really did want to just kind of address is going to be searching. So with searching, if you just type in forward slash, which I did right here, and then start typing, you will see it show up. As you can see, five got highlighted, 
Now I'm on five. I can press enter. I can press N to go to the next results and it will wrap all the way around as I do it. And of course, shift N to go backwards. Now you can also do a reverse search. You can do a search upwards with question mark and then the thing you want to search for, let's say four. Now when I press N, it goes backwards. And of course, when I press shift N, it actually goes forwards. And of course, I do the exact same thing that I did before. If I use this whole searching technique, I automatically replace N with ZZ to center it and ZV, of course, which is some fold operations. I don't really use folds, but if I did, I'd have it pre-prepared to be using with N or searching forward slash backwards. All right, there is a convenience for searching. So if I just have this crazy word right here and I take it and I paste it a couple times, let's just paste it a couple paragraphs down. There we go. And I just wanted to search for that. All I have to do is press asterisk while my carrot is on it and it will automatically load that word, that contiguous word into my search term and I can press and to go through it and of course shift and to go backwards you can also press pound sign and it'll do the exact same thing as a question mark search in other words an inverted search so when i press next i actually go upwards notice i went from line 80 to 61 from 61 to 30 from 30 to 15 and shift n goes forward now i don't really ever use uh the octothorpe the hashtag the pound sign uh i instead just use asterisk and then use a capital n uh lowercase n it just seems too specific too much overhead for me though i'm sure i could figure something out and i'd probably end up liking it i'm sure if i just practice with it but i just haven't got there okay you just can't master everything okay you can't just simply take every possible command and have them all become fluid and so i've kind of made some trade-offs yeah i don't use asterisk that often but when I use it, I'm not going to use pound. I'm just going to simply use asterisk. It's either going to wrap to the top and I have to press shift N to go backwards or it's going to go somewhere where I do want it to go. Now, in general, I find vertical motion to be one of the hardest ones to master because you have to be pretty good at either searching for what you want, being able to use page up, page down. There is also like one third page up, page down. I believe it's a Y and E or B and D. I can't even remember, but I don't use that. I just go half page at a time and I go quickly. I find the code that I want and I just move on. And of course, if I get close to where I need to be, then I just relatively search in. And what I mean by that is, let's say we're trying to find nine and I go up, up, Oh, I've overshot nine, four down. I'm now in nine. There we go. So the thing is, it's not too hard to get good at Vim. It just takes time. And I really do hope you take these vertical motions and apply them. Because here's the deal, is that it's going to be hard at first. And vertical is going to feel like one of the most trudging of all the exercises to get good at. But once you get good at moving around, you're going to really, really like it. Now, of course, I didn't show you really anything Vim specific this time. And that's okay. That's because this video had just a lot of motions in it and I didn't want to overwhelm so of course you know what that means you got to press the like button because you liked it and you got to press the subscribe button because you want to see the next one I just don't get it they just they don't it's like half of them won't press it. What do, what do I got to do, Karen? What do I need to do, Karen? No, but I really have enjoyed making this series so far. We're only on part three. We have a few parts to go, and I really hope that you're, you're getting excited because one of the best parts about engineering is the fact that everything is effectively like an infinite skill gap. Oh, you want to learn Rust? Well, it's really hard. And then once you kind of understand the borrow checker, it's really hard in async. And then it's really hard here. And there's just so much available to learn and get good at. And that pretty much applies with any language and the same thing with your editor sure you could just use the default editor with the default experience or you can customize and create your own experience notice that even my control d u and searching all has been customized to be very optimized for what i want it to be and you should feel free to do that too you should want to customize your editor even if you're not using vim and you're using vs code take the time to customize just hit the ground running, making it exactly the thing you want. So I hope that if anything you've taken out of this series is that you should be in control, you should be continuously trying to get better, and you should most of all enjoy the editing experience. You're going to be doing it for a while. Enjoy it. The name is the Primogen.